everyone and welcome to another video. So this is my pickups for the first half of January 2018. There's a little bit more than I expected in this, but hopefully that will tide you over until the next pickup video, which won't be at the end of the month, but actually halfway through February, just because I am traveling. So yes, if there's not a pickup video at the right time, Fear not, it's, I haven't forgotten about you guys, I just am actually not here to show off things that I get. Uh, but rather than spend too much time, I'm just going to go straight into it. First of all was the anime. I wasn't expecting to get any anime for this part of the month, but the store I bought this from actually mailed it overnight, so it came to me a lot faster than I really expected. And that is the complete first season Blu-ray set of Sailor Moon Classic, the, the original series. This is the recent Blu-ray box set that Madman put out here in Australia. As you can see, it contains both parts, so you do get all 46 episodes altogether. This is pretty much an exact replica or duplicate of the earlier DVD limited edition box sets. Um, if you are following anime in a show, you probably know that we never got the Blu-ray release the same time the US did, just because the masters weren't there, Japan hadn't supplied anything, and Viz's uh, Blu-ray releases were pretty terrible for the for those discs. So Australia on made the decision to just uh, release the European version of the... They used the European Masters for the DVDs, which were a markedly higher level of video than the US, the recent US releases. But these do have the new uh, US dub, Japanese with subtitles as well, of course, like every modern uh, US or anime release, I should say. Um, yes. As I've said when I picked up the older DVD releases of this, I was never one to grow up on Sailor Moon. It was popular when I was a child, but I never had the opportunity to watch it, mainly because they only ever showed it before school, and I was never allowed to watch TV before school. My younger sister does have a lot more experience with classic Sailor Moon because she was a lot younger. Uh, she wasn't attending school at the time. So being able to re-watch it on this new improved DVD or Blu-ray release um, gives me an opportunity to actually finally get to something that is so highly regarded within the community. And in my opinion, I think Madman has done a great job with these releases. Um, this set also contains the booklet that the DVD sets did. So it's pretty much exactly the same aside from the actual disc format. And I do recommend it, especially if you're a Blu-ray uh, fan enthusiast or a Sailor Moon fan. I'm sure you are squaring these up. I got it for a very good deal. Um, the store, like I mentioned, that I bought from, we're having a 25% off uh sale so it was quite a bit less than um what i was expecting and you do get the entirety of the first season in this set rather than just half so i thought it was a good investment and decided to just jump on it whilst i had the opportunity and so yes now i have the first season of sailor moon classic on blu-ray manga we have the most recent volume of land of the lustrous so volume four I really, really enjoy this series. I think it's very well balanced, well written. The characters are all very intriguing in the setting and story development is not inherently obvious. Uh, the story as of where it is now in this fourth volume comparatively to where it started in volume one has changed in ways that I don't think you could go in and necessarily predict straight away. So I really do appreciate Ichikawa uh, her how she's directing her story. It's very, very, very good. Aside from that, um, I personally get a lot of enjoyment out of it because I have a background in 
earth sciences and geology in particular. I actually have a bachelor's degree uh, for geology, so I get sort of subtle in-jokes and references that maybe not everybody else does, so I don't know if that is inherently um, obvious to the casual reader, but as someone who spent four years learning about it and then working in that industry, I do laugh a little bit when I read some of these things. In addition to that, the characters are all pretty interesting. They've got very unique and uh, very setting, useful um, motivations. The fact that all of the characters are these sentient mineral gems isn't just a gimmick to lay down the setting, it is inherent in all of their interactions and how the actual conflict is resolved. It's very, very fascinating. It was one of my favourite series that debuted last year. I definitely recommend you check it out. And yeah, it's just really, 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 really good. Another new release, this one from Viz, is the most recent volume of Yuki Midorikawa's Natsume's Book of Friends, volume 21, a series I have adored for almost 10 years now. I just, every volume, every season of the anime, everything to do with Natsume is wonderful. Uh, I've said this before about this series, but it has this timeless quality to it that makes it approachable for anyone. It doesn't matter your age, you know, background, gender, whatever else. I think everybody can find something to relate to. And the actual topics that this series handles is done in such a way that you always feel very genuine emotion for it. It isn't a manipulative series like I find some other overly wrought, melodramatic, sad series are. And that's why I think Natsume has persisted for so long with such a large, um, overwhelmingly large positive recommend or rep recommendation, reputation. Um, this is something you could show your five-year-old child or your 95-year-old grandparent. It's something for everyone, and in that way, I, I think series like this are undervalued. And when we find them, they really need to be celebrated. Natsume, um, the, it's actually this year's the 10th anniversary for the first season of anime, and the fact that it has been doing so well for so so long is just a testament to it to it honestly in my opinion um this 21st volume like we have been for several years now we are pretty much up to date um i am still a little bit surprised that we have gotten so far in english because in everything that i've said it is very um it was for a very long time an unknown series. I felt honestly that I and maybe three other people were buying it. Uh, of course, the fact that we do have 21 volumes now that have been released in English does show that someone's buying it somewhere, and I can only hope to encourage more people to try it out. Uh, the anime as well, all of it is on Crunchyroll, so check it out. It's marvelous. One of my favorite all-time series and likely never to, you know, be removed from that list. It's, it is fantastic. For the final new release manga, we have the most recent Haikyuu volume, volume 19, another Viz series that has been doing incredibly well. I'm so glad it has been because I think, like I've said, with every volume of this, this is really encapsulates probably the best aspect of sports manga. It has a very uh, upbeat energy, it's very positive, all of the characters are very unique and memorable, and the overall story, despite being a sport that maybe not everybody follows or has experience with, is always engaging. Um, and I think really that's what sports manga has to be, regardless of whether you're reading something about basketball or golf or anything. Um, in that 
respect. I think Haiki does have, have a very well-deserved reputation. The anime, again, is very, very good for this series. And with these volumes, we are coming up to stuff that is sort of the last parts that were adapted in anime. We do still have a couple more volumes. Um, and then we're into new, new stuff. And I'm looking forward to that because um, I have seen all of the anime and I want to know what happens next because following these characters' journeys, all of the characters, regardless of which team, is, it makes you enjoy their interactions and you really grow close to them. They all have reasons for why they're doing things and it's just very likable. It doesn't have to do anything, you know, completely new. It doesn't have to reinvent the genre for it to be successful. And in that regards, Haiki do really does epitomize the best of what is available for shonen sports manga. Uh, if you're not reading it at this point, again, there's nothing I could say to, to really encourage you to try it. I've said it all a million times. Everyone said it all a million times. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. That is perfectly fine. Uh, but if you are looking for a sports series, especially a more current one, uh, the Haiki is definitely one to try out. So we have some older manga. Uh, these were both secondhand. I got from Better World Books, a wonderful website that actually is selling Ex library books and everything that you spend on there actually helps go towards reading funds and libraries and other various literary programs across the world, but mostly the US. So check them out if you don't mind secondhand books, manga, or otherwise. Uh, but that is volume four and volume five of Nabari no O by Yuki Kamatani. So this series is something that I've known about for many, 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 many years. Um, Yen Press released it quite a few years ago. Um, and it was nothing, something that I was not really that interested in for a very long time. I actually became aware of it through the anime when Funimation was putting out that. And I saw it was ninjas, and it was marketed as sort of like a weird comedy ninja series. And so it didn't really look like it would appeal to me all that much. Um, but now, it has been several, several years, um, this I've become more aware of this author and their work. Um, their current series, a uh, Shimonami Tasagare is one of my most highly wished for license requests. Um, it's something that is very, very niche, but I think would suit some publishers like Seven Seas very, very well. And through that work, I was introduced to Nobari no O, and it gave me a better uh, scope to look at this series through and give it a second chance. And I'm quite happy I did. I've only read the first two volumes of this series. I don't yet have the third volume, uh, but I got these particular volumes for very cheap, so I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity. It's 14 volumes long. It is a shonen action series, uh, and it does contain ninjas, but it's a lot less of a Naruto and a lot more like Pandora Hearts or something similar of that nature, where it starts off quite lighthearted, uh, but develops into a much darker story. And even with the second volume, you can see the direction that the series is going. Um, it's very, very interesting. It's not what I would have said to expect back when I had first heard of it. And it's not something I necessarily expected going into it. It's very, very intriguing. Um, if you are a fan of, uh, Shunami Tasagari, although it is not exactly available legally in English, I would encourage you to try the series. It is the only one of their works that is available in English, and it's a lot more than it might necessarily seem from its initial like plot synopsis. So I'm glad that I gave it a chance, and I'm looking forward to reading more. 
Next is another Expo Library book I got from Better World Books, and that is the third omnibus of Cross Game by Mitsuru Arachi. And this series, like with Haikyuu, really does encapsulate the best parts of sports manga in a very different way than Haikyuu. Um, of course, it is a lot older, and Adachi is definitely regarded as the godfather of baseball manga for a reason. Um, this series, I think, is approachable for anyone, regardless of whether or not you enjoy baseball or sports manga in general. It's a lot more than what you can typically see in a uh, normal shonen sports series. So in that regard, I would elevate it above... Um, maybe what you would expect from a sports series. Not to say, you know, general sports manga are bad, of course, but it's just a different experience comparatively to some of your more run-of-the-mill or well-known sports series. It's very, 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 very good. Um, the reason, really the only reason I haven't picked up this series yet is just because I've had it in my wish lists and those sorts of things for s literally years since it was first being released, but it's only been um, since now having refocused my attention on my real wants comparatively to just having everything that I finally had the opportunity to pick up these sorts of titles that I've wanted for so long or have read and just known I would need in the collection. So. Yes, it's really a wonderful series. Uh, we do, I mean, you hope and pray that we get more Adachi manga in English, but comparatively a lot of his other works, a lot of his more well-known works are so much longer than this simple 17 volume series. Uh, things like Touch and other titles. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get any more, uh, but if we if Cross Game is the only uh, Adachi manga we do get in English, you could certainly, certainly do worse. Um, but yes, just a really, really great, great series. So try it out if you haven't. It is a little bit older, but it's all still in print and totally easy to find. I really recommend it. For manga, we have a BL volume, uh, the most recent volume of the World's Greatest First Love, Volume 9. I've said this about this series before. This is not a great or fantastic or highly recommended manga. Personally, it's one of those guilty pleasures for me. Um, I wouldn't even credit it as being like, a, oh, if you're a fan of BL, you should read it. If you're a fan of BL, you probably have read it. You probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And I've spoken about my distaste for Nakamura's other series, Junja Romantica, before. Just not my thing. I think she's very... She relies very heavily on a lot of the tropes of the genre. And, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of most of those tropes, so it doesn't work for me. Uh, the World's Greatest First Love, thankfully, has a lot fewer of those tropes. Not none of them. It definitely has a lot of them, but some are sort of just, you have to forgive the genre. It's just, it's a staple. Um, and I'm not that pedantic, God. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is sort of a guilty pleasure. Um, it's not, it's not something I read expecting a huge amount of. I know exactly what to expect and I get exactly that. And just definitely not high art. Um, I'm sure if you're a BL fan or if you buy a lot of yaoi manga, you do already know the series, you've already bought this series, and or have already read this series. You know exactly whether or not you'll want it or not want it. Um, but I'm, I am happy that Sublime finally, uh, or somebody, some publisher, finally licensed and released the series. Because in my opinion, it is definitely Nakamura's best work. Um, some people would argue that Hybrid Child maybe is, but um, I'm, again, not a huge fan of that one. May parts of it, but not all of it. Um, so, yes. This series is 
pretty much exactly what you expect it to be, and so if you just accept it as that, you're not going to be disappointed. Next I'm going to be talking about some light novels, and there's quite a few here that I got this month, mainly because I did finish two series, and I started two series. Um, and the first one that I'm going to show off is volumes 8 and 9 of Kelly. Uh, a sort of science fiction shoujo by Yukiko Kabe. This is one of the first light novels that Yen Press ever released. Uh, so these volumes are part one and part two of The Dead Sleep Eternally in the Wilderness. And if you don't know anything about Kieli, this series follows a... It's set on a planet where the seas are made of sand, and Kieli is... Uh, it used to be a very prosper prosperous planet, but a hundred years before... Um, all of the resources, all of the mineral resources were lost in a great war between two factions. Uh, so Kieli is a young orphan who has grown up in this sort of religious school, but she can see ghosts. No one can ever, has ever believed that she can see ghosts, but she can see ghosts. Uh, in the first book she meets Harvey, who is an undead soldier from the war that happened a hundred years ago. He's not a ghost, he's actually a uh, reanimated body, uh, because these undead soldiers were used during the war to stop or to prevent more people from dying. So he has this core that powers him and keeps him alive and all this other stuff. They also have a radio that is possessed by the ghost of a, another soldier who is on the opposite side of the war to Harvey. It's very interesting. So the overall plot or their motives is to get this radio to sort of the final resting place of all of these soldiers and to, to make amends for Harvey to, to relinquish his guilt about killing so many people during the war. And Kiali's trying to escape her sort of very sheltered, secluded life, uh, seen as an outcast and a weirdo. Uh, it's very, very interesting. I definitely recommend it, especially if you're not one uh, who's really interested in a lot of the current light novel trends, stuff like the isekai style, uh, sort of setting. It's very, very different from a lot of that. I would encourage you to read it sooner rather than later, though, because Volume 9 is going out of print, which is one of the biggest motivators for me to finally finish this series. I've been meaning to for so long, I've just been really lazy about it. Uh, but it is really, really good. I find all of the characters uh, really interesting, and sort of every novel or every plot is very well done. Um, it's not the greatest light novel series I've ever read, but I think it's definitely a good starting point that Yen decided to go with. It's sort of, it was this series and Book Girl and Spice and Wolf and Haruhi Suzumiya, which were their first titles. I, this I would expect to not have done as like as well as Spice and Wolf or Haruhi. It, this never got an anime adaptation or anything like that. But it is well worth the read, especially if you're a light novel fan and you want something a little bit different from the norm. Um, if you're a fan of something like Kino's Journey, I would definitely recommend it. It has that same sort of vibe. Um, there's a, quite a bit of action in parts, it's got, but it's got a lot of sort of higher questions about what it means to be human and living and and just being yourself and acceptance and grief and all of these things. It's very, very good. So read it. I again this is one that I feel like I've I'm the only one who's read or bought. Uh but it's definitely one to check out. Another light novel series I finished in English, or at least I finished picking up all of that was released in English is the Full Metal Alchemist light novels. So volume three, which is The Valley of White Petals, and volume four, which is Under the Faraway Sky. 
Uh, so Viz actually released these many, many years ago, uh, before light novels were really seen as profitable. Um, we did get five of the seven. There were two other ones that were related to the video game, the two Full Metal Alchemist video games, released back in the mid 2000s. Um, so in that regards, it's not a complete series, but the fifth is sort of the last purely uh, not related to or tied into any franchise game uh, books. All of them were written by Makoto Inoue, and a lot of the sort of side stories or plots from these light novels were introduced and used in the 2003 Fullmetal Alchemist anime adaptation. I haven't, again, read either of these two volumes or the last volume. They are very uh, young, sort of. The translation reads like it's written for young kids, which is understandable because not only is uh, our light novel sort of more for young people, but when Viz was translating this, Fullmetal Alchemist was really a, a gateway series. A lot of young kids, middle schoolers, and even younger probably, started with Fullmetal Alchemist and having these books in a in language that was easy to digest and read uh, makes a lot of sense. In saying that, yeah, don't go into this uh, or don't go into the series expecting a lot of um, turn of phrase or just sentence structure to be anything above like a eighth or ninth grade reading level. Um, I would maybe even argue like a seventh grade level because it's not meant to be super <laughs> challenging and it is meant for you know kids of the that age group as a big full Alchemist fan and i know arakawa does enjoy these books quite a lot she thinks that you know i really captured the heart of her characters i did want to read them for myself um and i find it interesting to see sort of the differences between various adaptations and full Alchemist, like i have made no no secret of is one of my favorite series of all time it is one of my first series that i ever got and it, i think i've enjoyed every part of the franchise that i've experienced um and these novels are no exception again they are for young young readers but they're just it's fascinating to see what was adapted into the older anime what wasn't sort of how certain authors treated the same characters it's just done really well and i do have to agree with arakawa that you know i really does understand how the characters work especially the relationship between the brothers and their dialogue with each other um it's really good and yeah i wouldn't necessarily say pick this up if you're a full alchemist fan but if you're interested in it and you are enough of a fan, I would say it's not you're not gonna feel bad if you buy them. They're they are really a great gift probably to give to kid like younger kids that you might know who are sort of into anime, especially for Malchemist, um, and might not necessarily be huge readers. Um, but yeah, they're they're great for what they are and I'm glad that we did get so many uh so like such a huge percentage five out of seven of these novels released in English before light novels really were um sort of its own niche within the market and within fans consciousness for the debuts for light novels I have A.G. Mikage's The Empty Box and Zero with Maria uh volume one released by Yen On this series I didn't know a huge amount about, aside from it has an incredibly high reputation. People regard it as one of the best light novel series available. Um, it's always voted extremely high on sort of every everywhere you look. Um, and it's pretty short, only seven volumes long. So I wanted to give it a chance. It isn't an isekai like a lot of the other... Uh, light novels coming out currently. It does ha fall within sort of the high school 
setting, uh, though, that is sort of more standard for light novels, at least five to ten years ago it was. Um, it has a very interesting but very well resolved plot within this book. I am intrigued to see where it goes from here because this book does resolve itself. You don't have really that many hanging plot threads after it's done. It really just focuses as like a murder mystery who done it series uh, or story, should I say? Um, so yes, it's when you hear such grand statements of like one of the best light novel series ever. I get very curious. I want to try it. I want to assess that for myself. And having read it, it's. It has elements that I've seen in a lot of different series. It does it very well, and I'm intrigued to see where it goes from here to make it sort of so highly regarded. Um, yeah, it's just... I think it's one that people have been wanting for a very, very long time. So, of course, it's a good thing that uh, Yen did give us a release for this. I know a lot of people were very happy when it was announced to be getting a release. Um, yeah, it's... I don't want to spoil anything about it, but if you are a light novel fan and you're wanting to try something new and something that a lot of people agree is very good, and I do agree it is very good, um, and not necessarily a huge commitment, um, yeah, definitely try this one out. As I said, the story within this book is sort of encapsulated and concluded very well. So even if you're not necessarily a fan of the story, you're not going to be left with a million questions afterwards. And you can assess whether or not you want to keep reading. So yes, Empty Box and Zero Maria, Volume 1. Finally for light novels, this is another very highly anticipated release. It is Seven Seas release of Record of Lotus War, The Grey Witch, which is basically volume one of this series. Again, not one that's super, super long, but one that I think really only would have ever gotten a release right now as the market is so welcoming and uh, has adapted so much to be able for light novels to be profitable. Um, Record of Lotus War is sort of, it's a classic of the fantasy light novel genre. It really is regarded as the first light novel ever. Um, there's some arguments on that, but it is, it's classified as one of the first Definitely. And it's interesting because it started mainly as like a D&D-esque uh, tabletop game setting and then the author used his characters within that setting or he used those sorts of settings, so D&D and tabletop games, to explore the characters that he had created. So if you're a fan of high fantasy or that sort of D&D tabletop gaming you should definitely try this out. It's within that sort of writing and lore and and that sort of thing. Um, I lucked out. I got one of the special pink <laughs> pink printings. Uh, this was a issue, a known issue. Seven Seas did tweet about. Um, I am not. I will probably get a replacement black ink. But I do really like the pink ink. I think it's a pretty interesting little mess up. They obviously didn't mix their inks properly or didn't have the second layer on them. Um, yeah, I I think it, regardless of that issue and the rarity of like a misprint like this, um, I really think Seven Seas did a great job and I hope they do really well with this book. Um, the front has a lot of really lovely colour images, a lot of very interesting, uh, and the back as well also, has a lot of very interesting and nice colour images and character stuff so you know who's who. As you can see, it is definitely 
Um, just from character names, you can definitely tell there's some uh, influences on from tabletop gaming. Uh, so yeah, I'm. I haven't actually read this one as of yet, but I have seen the Lotus War OVAs. Uh, not the TV series, but the OVAs. Um, so I know sort of what to expect. I know what I'm getting into, and I know that I. I will enjoy it. This sort of high fantasy is a little bit of a lost art within anime and manga and sort of Japanese media. We do still get fantasy series, of course, uh, but the sort of seriousness and scheming and uh, just the, it's just a different focus to where it is now. And even if you just take this series as a relic of an era and really the beginning of of this whole movement and this whole type of media um it's it's fascinating so i hope that like i said i hope this does really well for seven seats i hope we see more books from this series because i don't think it's necessarily a sure thing um and yeah i will continue to support them if they continue to release the series everything that I got for this first two weeks of 2018. Um, yes. So I think I got pretty good stuff. A lot of continuing things, a lot of older releases that uh, I'm finishing up or getting some gaps with. And really trying to get rid of my want to buy list that are like older titles that aren't just new licenses or announcements. 2017 was a good year not only for debuts and license, uh, debuts and releases, but licensing as well. 2018 looks to have a lot of really interesting, really wonderful and niche titles, stuff that I'm very, very interested in for the upcoming months. Um, and yes, as for videos. I am still going to be posting a video every week. Uh, let's hope I can continue that. But I am going to be going away. Uh, so this time next week I'm actually going to be in the United States. Um, so I'm not going to have my regularly scheduled end of January video. So don't freak out when that's when it's a different video, it will be either an art book overview or a first impressions or a video of that type. Um, all of the stuff that is mailed to me or arrives at my house whilst I'm gone will be in my mid February or my first February pickups video. Um, yeah, just because again, I'm not here makes sense. I can't do a video, but like I said, the schedule will stay on track, hopefully. Um, but yes, thank you so, so much for watching. I am pretty happy with everything that I got for this pickups video. A lot more than I expected, namely because Sailor Moons came so quickly and I did finish a couple, or I got a couple older volumes and releases that I didn't necessarily expect to get. But thank goodness for good deals. Um, of course, I never have such huge pickup videos, unlike some people. But I'm fairly happy. I, well, I'm very happy with the titles I pick up. And I hope to continue that over this coming year. Uh, yes. Keeping focus with my collection has been one of the best things I did over 2017. I can only hope to continue that with such um, fervor and strictness, I guess, over this year. But thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye till then.